Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and I'm here to help you become an expert maths teacher so that all the children you work with become fluent and creative and confident with their maths and just love their maths. This is the first video in the series for teachers of six-year-olds or six to seven-year-olds, which in English schools is year two. It covers the English primary maths curriculum, which is harder than any other primary maths curriculum in the world. I am not suggesting that you change your curriculums to make them this hard, but I'm using this curriculum because if I cover everything in it, then you're gonna be able to do whatever's right for your curriculum. So in this introductory video, I'm going to explain what expert teaching is. I'm going to introduce the different videos that are going to be in this series so you can find your way around it. And I'll explain about baselining. That is what you need to do when you first meet your class to suss out if any of the children are experiencing challenges with their maths that you need to intervene on quickly. So what is expert primary maths teaching? Well, expert primary maths teachers don't need to rely on detailed lesson plans written for them by someone else. They may choose to use schemes of work that are written in tremendous detail when they work for their children, but they may improve on it at times and they know how to adjust and make their lessons work when those detailed schemes don't work for any reason, because in their own minds, they deeply understand what it is they're doing and what it is they're trying to achieve with their children. When I'm running live training, I often try and explain what I mean here by talking about cooking. Now, some people like to buy cooking systems where all their ingredients and recipe cards arrive in one box. I love that. It's great. You get All you have to do is follow your recipe card and you're going to get a great meal. And pretty much anyone can cook great food. But what happens if the right ingredients don't arrive? What happens if some extra people turn up and you have to improvise with what's in the fridge? What happens if when you follow those instructions, something goes wrong? I don't know how to adjust. And this is just like primary teachers with their maths detailed pre-written schemes. An expert teacher knows how to adjust if the kids aren't making the progress you expect with the scheme, or if you've got new children in your class who've missed all the previous lessons, or if you've had several snow days and you suddenly have to teach five lessons in one, they know what to do, they know how to cope. And the purpose of these videos is to try and communicate exactly what it is that those teachers know and do. And at the heart of it is two skill sets. One is having a really, really deep understanding of the underlying structures of maths. Some teachers teach detailed methods and they try and add in apparatus to bring it to life and create deeper understanding. Expert teachers deeply understand what that apparatus is doing and what structure it's communicating. And they make sure that children learn all the structures they need to learn thoroughly before they teach the methods and procedures. The other skill set is the art of listening to children, really listening to what's going on in their minds, helping them to unpack it, rather than listening for a specific answer or a specific method that you've already decided as a teacher you want to hear and not hearing what it is that's actually going on in the mind of the student. But don't worry if all that seems a bit overwhelming at this stage. In the videos in this series, I'm going to break it all down into bite-sized chunks so you can focus on one topic and one idea at a time and then it should really come to life. You can ask me questions after any video in the comments here if you still have questions or you can join me in real time at 9am British time on Sunday mornings to ask me questions live. And then of course there's the Facebook group as well which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching where you can come and chat anytime. So what are the videos in this series? Well this is video one, that's your introduction. In video two we're going to focus on teaching the numbers to 20 and we're going to have a major focus on the two underlying structures there, which is the structure of fives and ones and the part part whole structure of addition and subtraction. In video three, we'll look at our counting beads and this structure of the numbers to 100 in tens in a line. In video four, we'll look at the number square and all the work we do with that to make sure children deeply understand it. In video five, we'll look at array and how we use that structure to teach multiplication and division. Video six will be all about our introduction to base 10 apparatus. That's tens and ones when they're not in a line and they're starting to be free. In video seven, we'll look at fractions. 
Video eight will be all about strategies for listening to children rather than listening for a method or an answer. And we'll look at strategies like number talks and snowballing and a few more. And then we'll move on to our applied maths. So video nine will be on measure, video 10 will be on time, video 11 will be on money, video 12 on shape, video 13 will be on data, video 14 then we'll move on to problem solving. In video 15 we'll look at consolidating our teaching for the year, reviewing it, making sure children have really understood it and become fluent with it at the end of the year and are ready for any tests they may have or for their next year of education. And video 16 will be all about managing people. We'll look at managing the people who work around you, whether that's teaching assistants or your leadership team that work around you and managing their expectations of what you do and also at managing your expectations of yourself and your stress levels. And finally in this video I promised you I'd talk about baselining. Now in the next video in this series I'm going to emphasise the importance of doing a lot of work on the numbers to 20. And as you do that children should very quickly be able to name the numbers to 20 when you show them objects up to 20, especially if, if they're organised as fives and ones. So they should be able to see that that's a five and a two, so it's seven and so on. So that early teaching of the numbers to 20 that you do at the start of the year is also your baselining activity because very quickly you should be able to identify any children who are really struggling to correctly identify numbers up to 20. And you need to be asking, why is this child struggling? They may have simply missed school, in which case they need loads and loads of work on maths. And you want to be doing things like encouraging their families to play games with them, ladybirds, spotty dogs, all the usual ones, quick games, lots of fun, lots of exposure to small numbers and they should very quickly start to catch up. But if they don't, or if that's not the problem, then you need to be testing children for all sorts of potential special needs. Can they hear properly? Where else are they struggling? Now, one of the tests you should be doing at this stage if children are struggling is a test for motor sensory integration. These are the tests where you get children doing things like snow angels and you're watching to see if they can move exactly the arms and legs that you're telling them to move in the way that you're telling them to move them. And these tests are a really good way of diagnosing whether children need some work to coordinate their sensory inputs. This book, The Maze of Learning, is absolutely excellent, but it's not so easy to get hold of. So here's a link to a video which explains more about motor sensory integration and also tells you how you can get hold of this book. Because for some children, it's doing the exercises in this book that's going to make the difference that will mean that they're able to thrive with their maths this year. OK, that's it for the first video in this series. If you think this series is going to be useful to you, please do subscribe to the channel so you can find it again. If you've got time to give it a like or to share it with friends or colleagues who you may think may also find it useful, that would be wonderful. OK, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.